Hey, good morning. Uh, so this is day three, and uh, well, we did our run yesterday, so today we're going to work on mainly our upper body and do more of our arm type of stuff. Uh, we have some time uh, towards the end, uh, we'll, we'll do some reaction drills as well. So to start off with, we're going to start our warm up, uh, kind of help stretch our legs out from what we did yesterday, and then we'll get our arms ready for what we're about to do today. So we're going to start off with our normal jog in place, just jogging in place, gets that blood flowing, helps those legs kind of relax a little bit. Get your heart rate kind of pumped up. Now let's go ahead and just lift those knees up a little higher. And then we'll go butt kickers, high heels. Oh, sorry, it's a little kick. Jog in place. Front Irish jig. Back with Irish jig. Are you going to join us? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? You're doing the Irish jig too. Talk in place. I want your church to go start jumping for your day. So, yeah. I know, right? Yes, I know. That's good. You want exercise too? Yes. Jumping jacks. Yeah, they're big arms. <laughs> and skiers. <laughs> Are you doing skiers? Yeah. Doing skiers. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Dog in place. Sorry. Inhale, arms up. You ready to get licked? And exhale, hinge at your hips. Thank you, baby. Yeah. And again, if you need to like lean on something when you've been down here, find a dog. Exhaling. Trying to get your face closer to the ground when you exhale. Thank you, Zoe. Yes. <laughs> stretches with us. Okay, good. Like you said, it is a family exercise routine, so everybody in the family over the right leg. Everybody in the family should be able to join in and have fun doing it. And then over the left leg. Now back to the center. And we'll Spider-Man down back and forth, one side to the next. And switch. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Switch. Hey, Spider-Man. Is that what you're doing? Switch. Switch. <laughs> and then we're going to go to our hip flexor. So pivot to a lunge. Okay. And then we're trying to keep our back legs straight. Try to drop our hips down. That'll help our hip flexor get stretched out here. Now you'll notice that I want to get my front leg at a 90 degree angle. Sometimes people do this like this. It's, you don't want to have, you know, practice being in this position if you can help it. We want to have our weight on our heels. Legs should be straight down from the knee, the lower leg. Back leg is straightish. And now from here, with your hands on either side of your foot, just try to straighten your leg as far as you can go. If you can get your leg all the way straight, lift your toe, you'll feel that more back here. But again, keeping your hands down while you do this. Now some of you may be only able to get a little ways. So that's okay, that's as, push, as far as you can push it for now. Just keep trying to push it, get it past that little level of discomfort until you can kind of get as far as you can and hold. We go back down to a lunge again. And straighten that front leg again. Again, only go as far as you can. And that little bit of discomfort's okay. It shouldn't hurt, but it should be uncomfortable when you're stretching. Back down. That lets you know that you're actually stretching something. 
and straighten that front leg again. And then let's pivot the other way. We'll lunge that, that way now. Same thing, keep that back leg straight. Front leg at the 90 degree angle. Trying to drop your hips down towards the ground. And straighten that front leg. And back down. And straighten. Back down. And we'll stand on back up. Standing quad stretch would be nice right about now. So again, if you want to use your neighbor for balance, go for it. You don't need to. Sometimes it helps just kind of pretend you're holding on to a, a pizza or a bunch of balloons. Some people put their finger on their belly button. That helps them feel centered. Just Whatever it is, point at something, stare at something that's not moving. Switch. And let that go. Let's do our arms now. So we're going to start off with the right arm circle. Again, we're going to focus all of our exercises at, uh, this morning on our uh, arms. Feel that? Good. And we go reverse. And let's go forward with the other arm. And we'll go both arms today, the butterfly kind of position. And let's go back. All right, let's go arm across your chest, keep it high underneath the chin. Just pull that so you can feel it into your scapular area, back here in your back. So again, you want to feel this coming back into this area. That's where you're going to want to feel that stretch. And then let's just switch the other arm. Let's go arm behind the head now. Again, you can do this as an elbow grab or as an angel wing like you see Aiden do it. Doesn't matter which one you do, they'll both stretch things out about the same. You want to feel more stretch in your intercostals, just lean away from uh, that side that's being stretched. So you're kind of leaning down here this way. You feel that stretch all the way from your hip all the way up. Switch. And let that go. We'll go arms behind our back now. This time I want you to press your hands together. So you clasp your palms together. Don't let them come apart. Press down towards the ground. That'll give you a good, nice, good, like kind of soldier chest right there, or, or a uh, rooster chest. And we want that position there. Now, just lift away from your hips. Now, if you're really flexible like Caleb, you can get pretty far away. It's a little tighter. You may not be able to get very far at all. But either way, you're going to be able to stretch out. It's getting into your biceps and your shoulders and into your pecs. And let that go. All right, so we're gonna start. We're gonna need uh, uh, some stretch cords today. That's what, gonna be one of our focus uh, used to, uh, one of our focus tools today. And for some of these moves, if you um, have a hard time going like full range of motion on this, you might find it easier to go to a chair and do it from a seated position. And I'll show you how that looks in just a little bit. All right, well, you'll notice a change of scenery. Uh, we've moved back into the garage. It seems like every time we get going with filming outside, then it starts to rain. Every time we start to pull everything inside, then it stops raining. So we're just gonna go ahead and just stay in the garage from this point on, whether or not it rains or not. At any, at any rate, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna do a shoulder press. 
So uh, we're gonna use the bands for this one. Now, Caleb's gonna use his bands uh, from a seated position because his not, he's not strong enough if he stands up to push all the way up. Uh, so he's gonna make a, a modified uh, press. So he's gonna sit down. Basically, any chair uh, that you have, you can tuck it under the, the, the seat would work. And uh, you're gonna bring the cords so that they're in front. That way you're not gonna be you know, pinching your arms around like that. He's gonna be doing the same thing. And we're basically just pressing up and then coming back down. Okay. Now you'll see that Abe's got a staggered step. That's to protect his back. He doesn't want to stand both legs together like this when he's standing on it. So he's got one foot on the strap, the other uh, leg back for protecting his back so he can press up and still have strength behind to help protect his back. All right, and they'll just go ahead and press up. They'll count how many they can do before they feel like they're fatigued and they can't do any more or if you are going based off of a particular time frame, you say I have to do as many as I can in say 30 seconds. That's another way to go about doing this. So I like to just go until I'm fatigued and then I'll stop, I'll count how many I've done, and I'll write that down, and then we'll get ready to go to the next exercise. All done? All right. So our next exercise is gonna be kind of like a curl Okay, so what we'll do in the same concept is that you'll be standing on top of your uh, cord and this time you're going to just curl up and then come back down, okay? And you can do this from seated position as well if it's too much strain, uh, but I think most people, if they have the normal type of cords, can just come up to that normal curl position and then go back down. So get full range of motion when you're doing this, all the way down if possible, then come all the way up. Same idea, maximum reps, or uh, go as long as you can, or go for a certain amount of time. That also works as well for this. Make sure you're breathing too, okay? Mm -hmm. Very good, looks good guys. Good position. Okay, well, you can go ahead and put that back foot back a little bit more, so you're a little, a little bit more uh, stabilized. All right, so on this next one, there's two ways to go about doing this. If you have like a handle or something that you can wrap or, or a post that you can wrap the cord around, you can do this from a bent over position. It's gonna be a tricep press like you would if you're finishing your freestyle. Another way that you can do this if you don't have anything like that is kind of go like we've been doing. Let's stand back on it and you're gonna press up and behind you this way. So there's two ways to go. Let's say Caleb is my post or whatever, I can do it like this and press behind me like this without <laughs> pulling him over. But I would essentially just press behind me if I had like a, a hook or a door or something like this, I could hook this around. Uh, we don't have that anything like that in the garage out here. So we're just gonna go to the stepping on it st uh, style, which means we're gonna stand up like this. I'm gonna bend over, I'm gonna just kind of press up to behind me and come back. Press up and then come back. All right, Caleb, you turn. What's that? We do have a punching bag, that could work too. So you're getting your elbows close to your body, yeah, and then pressing behind you and holding that position and coming back down. Exactly right, good. Just like you're finishing your freestyle, finishing your butterfly, you're pressing out. Triceps are one of the summer's strongest weapons, uh, so you wanna really work these. You'll find that you can probably do a lot more this way than you can this way just because of how often we're utilizing these muscles when we swim. Doing good. Good, all done? Yeah? Great job, all right, good. All right, so we've done uh, shoulders, we've done biceps, we've done triceps. And we're gonna kind of cycle through that a couple times, doing some different motions here and there to kind of mix it up a little bit, but it's essentially that same thing over and over and over today. All right, for this next one, it's gonna kind of be a combo of doing biceps and shoulders. So we're gonna start off with a curl and then into a press and then back down all the way, okay? You're seeing that Aiden's got his Steps are staggered to protect his back for that over the, the head type of press. But he's curling up and pressing up. 
Caleb's got a good job of doing that too. Keep your balance even on both feet if you can. There we go, good. Up, and then press. Now Caleb's gonna probably fatigue faster because he's smaller and it's a lot more struggle for him. So he'll probably only get to maybe like six or seven. You see he bends his legs to kind of come down a little bit easier there, which is fine. Make sure you're doing this very carefully, taking your time. Stop when you have no more technique. Once your technique is gone, then you have reached. So Caleb, you're pretty much done there because you're coming down pretty hard. Okay, he's got a little bit more strength, so he can go a little bit longer. Again, everyone's going to be different, so you got to do what's right for your body and what you're able to do. Okay, Caleb's going to feel this tomorrow. He will. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is triceps. Okay, so we'll just do a simple uh, kind of a chair dip or a tricep press in a chair dip position. So when you're doing this one, there's a couple different modifications you can make. Uh, the either way, you want to kind of put your hands on a chair or on a bench, whatever way it feels comfortable for your hands to be, then that's fine. And then what you do is just kind of scoot your butt away from the chair and you dip down as far as you're able and then press back up. Now you're doing body weight again, so anytime you're doing body weight, you guys just keep going. Anytime you're doing body weight, you just go maximum reps. If you want to increase your, your load, like for Aiden, he can make it a little bit heavier by lifting one leg. Now he's got more work, and he's actually engaging his abs at the same time. If you want to go less load, he'll bend your knee for me, bring him closer. That'll, bend, that'll lighten the load quite a bit, and he can go a little bit longer. So it's all based off of ability, what can you do, and make sure that you're doing it safely. Okay, he's adjusting his hand positions, just different spots, seeing what feels comfortable, what feels good for him. And you just do as many as you can. You got the leg lift going on, it's real good. All right, so that's second round. All right, so now for our third round, this is gonna be same kind of concept, shoulders, and then biceps, and then triceps. So the first thing we're gonna start off in our staggered step is gonna be like a high row or kind of like a pull your pants up to your chin kind of motion here. Notice that the elbows are staying high, hands are in that close to the chin position and it goes back down, then back up, and then back down. Again, do as many as you can, try to keep your balance even. As soon as your back feels like it's fatigued and you're not able to maintain technique anymore, your elbows are no longer up high, then it's time to stop, you've reached your maximum. Real good, Caleb. Good. How many was that? Ten. Ten. That's pretty good. How many was that for you? Um, twenty. Twenty. That's fantastic. Okay, so for the next one, we're gonna go to a static curl. Static means you have kind of an isometric hold, holding on to one of the straps while the other one does its full range of motion type of curl. We'll go four on one arm like this, and then we'll switch and go four to the other. This one we'll do 16 total, so it'll be four, 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 and four. Eight on each arm, essentially. So you gotta keep this hand at that halfway mark, that way you're engaging the muscle the whole time, right? You wanna, you wanna make up for the ones you missed? Sure. There? Go ahead, we'll wait for you. That 90 degree bend in the arm, there we go, good. You'll feel that fatigue really hit you real quick on this one, holding that, that curl position that long. You feel that? Good. All right, so this next one is a flip grip tricep kickback. So you're gonna be flipping your grip around from one side to the next. So on this one, back into your tricep press position. Remember, try to keep your back flat when you do this, and you're gonna be first off pressing this way like you finished your butterfly, then when you come back down, turn your hand around, and then it's almost like doing a backhand in tennis. It's kind of like a follow through type of position for a backhand tennis. So press, a forehand type of press, and then a backhand type of press. Again, go as many as you can. Elbows should stay still when you're doing this. That's real good. So we don't want it to turn into like an arm swing. We want our elbows to kind of stay still and the press to happen like this. It is tough. You'll feel that real, real tough on the backhand part. You feel that one? Here. Very good. Yeah, right back there. Good. All right. All right. 
right, so on this next uh, round, we're going to start off with another shoulder exercise, and we go into our biceps, and we go into our triceps again. So on this one, we're going to go forward and side, uh, shoulder rise, okay? Uh, go ahead, and so you're going to reach your arms forward and hold it up, and then come back down, and then go out to the side and up, and then come back down. Now forward again, come back down, go ahead and go at your own pace. Now Caleb who's not as strong yet, he's gonna hold his a little bit longer because he can't get all the way up. So he's gonna hold his position just a little bit longer so we can get that same type of exercise that Aiden's gonna get because he's doing a full uh, or full motion. Since he can't get as full of a motion, he'll hold it for longer. Make sure you kind of keep your, your hips still. You don't wanna go forward with your hips, okay? And then when you guys are done, We'll switch to the next one. So the next one is a static curl. So you're going to curl up and hold for about four seconds and then go back down. Curl up and hold for about four to five seconds and then go back down. It's more of a static type of concentration curl. Go ahead. Try not to bring your elbows forward so much. If you keep your elbows back, you'll feel it sooner. If you go forward with your elbows, you, your, your arms can take more of the load. So if you bring your elbows back, then the biceps have to take most of the load by themselves. Do you feel it more now? Yeah. Oh. So oh. that's one of the mistakes people make is they'll curl, curl up and then go like this. And now it's just kind of gravity. They're just really balancing it. They're just using really kind of small muscles to hold that thing in place. You can do this with weights as well. We can Once you get it up past that point, once you, you're here, you're balanced. So if you can bring the elbows in, you'll never have balance because the arms have to be tucked in this way, and this arm's always gonna be levered out. So that means the biceps have to do a lot more work. And now I feel it. Yeah, go ahead, great. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is a, is a side tricep rise. It's kinda like doing a push up from your side. And I'll go ahead and take your uh, cords for you. Did you leave right there, that's fine. So the boys are gonna lay, lay down on their side like this. Okay, and what they're going to do is they're going to take their bottom arm and grab onto their top shoulder. Okay, yep, just like that. So you grab it, taking your bottom arm and grabbing onto your top shoulder, taking the top arm and placing that hand kind of by your armpit. And you're going to just kind of push yourself up like you say, hey, what's that over there? And then you come on back down. Again, this is your own body weight, so you just go as many as you can and try to get the same amount on the other arm. So you just go ahead and go at your own pace until you get fatigued, and then once you're fatigued and you no longer have good form, it's time to stop and then switch to the other one. Real good, I like that. So keep your elbow tucked in, uh, you know, arm closer, all right. Help arm closer to your chest. There you go, that's it, there you go, that's where you want to be. There you go, good. And so when you're ready to switch, just switch over to the other arm. Again, remember it's going to be your bottom arm grabbing onto the top shoulder and the top arm reaching in underneath the armpit for that press. And go ahead and just press yourself up. You might find one side stronger than the other. Again, that's pretty normal for a lot of uh, athletes who do, like say, baseball, tennis, things where you're dominant with one hand more than the other. Swimmers, if, if you're uh, you know, a, true, a true swimmer, you'll probably have equal strength on both sides. Did you about match your number on both sides? That's great. That's good. All right, so that's it. Uh, that's the rounds. That's, uh, I think, four rounds I think we've gone through. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat that same set one more time through, and that'll be our workout for the day. At the end of that, we're gonna go through some reaction drills that we'll work on together. All right, so we're just gonna start from the top again. So we're gonna to go to that shoulder press position. Uh, Caleb, if you wanna to go to the full position, you can this time, or if you wanna go from the chair like you did the first time, you can do that as well. I'll leave it up to you. So you're just gonna get that arms in position, 
and you're going to press up and come back down. Press up and then come back down. After that, you're going to go to just your bicep curl now. Same thing, just bicep curling it up and back down. Full range of motion. You had it right, yep, you got it. Up and down. Excellent work. And then when you reach fatigue on that, the next one will be your tricep kickbacks. So bent over, flat back, press those elbows up. Finish that stroke like you're finishing butterfly. Try to keep your head up if you can, Caleb. There you go. Good, good. Try to flatten your back as well. There you go. Excellent. That's really nice. Whew. Very good. All right, coming back through. So we'll go to our full range now. You're going to do a curl into a press. Okay. Good. Really nice, excellent work. And then after that, we'll go to our chair dips. Again, remember here, you can modify. If you want more weight, you can add more weight by lifting your leg. So next we'll go back to shoulders again. We're gonna do the standing uh, upright row where you're kind of pulling that cable up to your chin. Keep the elbows high, strong back, stagger the step. Really good. Really good, guys. After that, we'll go to that static arm curl where you hold your arm at a 90 degree curve or 90 degree angle while the other one does full range of motion for four. And then you'll switch. And then you'll switch again. And then you'll switch again. And then after that, we go to our flip grip tricep kickback. So you'll press. Uh, like you do finishing a butterfly, and then turn it around and finish it with like kind of a backhand stroke. And then we'll finish it off with those straight arm flies. So both arms coming forward, and then both arms going to the side. And then after that, we'll go to that static type of curl where you're curling up, holding it for about four seconds. Remember to keep the elbows back. Don't let your elbows come forward. And then you go back down. That way the biceps have to be engaged the whole time and you're not balancing that arm instead. Really nice. Nice job keeping the elbows back. And then the last part was that side try rise. Remember the bottom arm reaches up and holds onto the shoulder of the top. That top arm tucks in underneath the elbow or underneath the armpit and then you press from there. <laughs> Good job, Caleb. I'm loving it.
feeling it? Good for you. Excellent work. So as promised, we're going to do some reaction drills now. This is pretty fun. Uh, actually, it's kind of a game uh, as well as uh, training. So the first reaction that we're going to do is just going to be based off of me saying go. And you're going to have your hands here at your side. And I'll say swimmers, take your mark. And then I'll say go. And when I say go, this is kind of like an old west uh, western, you know, where you're going to pull the gun faster than the other guy. But instead of pulling guns, you're clapping and then coming back. So it's a quick movement, movement like this. All right? So here we go. You everyone got your hands uh, on your, uh, your pockets here or on your, or on your guns here. All right? And I'll say swimmers, take your marks, go. And I'm going to go just like that. <laughs> got it. Exactly right. All right, here we go. Swimmers, take your mark, go. Now, the important thing about this one is that you're reacting. Don't predict. Prediction will get you disqualified on a start. You try to predict the start, you go early, you might not ever get to swim that race that day. So the idea is here, you're just trying to train your synaptic reflexes to signal faster. And the only way you do that is by sending that signal more and more and more. Those uh, connections get stronger the more often you send them. So you actually can improve your reaction time by doing drills like this. Here we go again. Swimmers, take your mark. Good. Here we go again. Swimmers. Take your mark. Hup. Wonderful. Swimmers. Take your mark. Hup. And here we go again. Swimmers. Take your mark. Hup. Good. Alright, so we'll do our legs for this one. This will be kind of a uh, old school double footed start where you'll come down like you're on the blocks. And you'll take your marks, and I'll say go, and you just hop forward. Again, it's not about how high you go, it's not about how far forward you're jumping, it's about how quickly you get your, hand, your feet to move forward. All right, here we go. Swimmers, take your mark. Hup. Good, here we go again. Swimmers, take your mark. Now you'll notice that I kind of change the pause time that I'm using so that they're not getting used to a specific amount of time for my take my marks uh, and my go. I want them to start to react. I don't want them to start getting used to a particular time frame. Okay? So if you guys are doing this one on your own, you're having your parents help you out, remember to try to get away from doing it at a particular cadence. Try to keep it a little bit more randomized so that they have to react. Here we go again. Swimmers. Take your mark. Yep. Good. And one last one. Swimmers. Take your mark. Yep. Good. All right. So this next reaction drill, they're going to just actually play a game called hand burn. So this is a nice if you have uh, friends or you have uh, family. So in this one, uh, just like an old school, school hand burn game. So we have the two uh, players here. One player is going to have his hands facing up. The other player is going to have their hands facing down, and they're going to be in contact. Now, again, this is a reaction drill, not a mental psychological war. You can always play these like head fakes and these like twitchy twitchy games, but that's not really helping anyone make a better reaction. So, really, we want to have just one motion, and that one motion is the minute we start to move our hands, touch the guy's hands on top. That's our one motion. There's no twitch or anything like that. Just make the one motion. You can touch the hands right on top of yours. You can cross over if you really think you're hot stuff. Or you can just do one hand at a time. Now if this person here uh, was able to dodge the hit, then they get to be on the bottom and the other player gets to be on top until the next miss. And that's when you switch. Go ahead, boys. You guys get the idea. This can digress pretty quickly, so you gotta really kind of keep on top of it and realize what you're trying to achieve. 
once it starts to turn it into a kind of like a little bit hit back and forth, then you're pretty much not working on the drill anymore. It's time to stop and move on to the next drill. Okay, so this next drill here, we're going to go outside to do. I call this one the Iron Cross. Uh, we do need a little bit more room because Aiden can actually jump up and hit his head here. So we're going to go outside and do this last drill. All right, so this one's a full body reaction drill. We're gonna all be laying down uh, and are gonna, we're gonna lay on our back in a, in a T position. That's the cross position or the iron cross position. And essentially what they're doing is they're waiting for my start. Now, when I say swimmers, take your marks, go. Now they're gonna jump all the way up to their feet into a streamlined position, then come back down. So again, it's who can get off their feet the fastest. Okay, so here we go, swimmers, take your marks. Nice, very good. Go ahead, try back, lay back down again. Caleb, okay, go ahead and let your arms actually touch the ground. It's okay to kind of let them relax a little bit. Remember to keep the legs flat here. And uh, keep the arms flat. Kind of go to a T position, not a Y position. Caleb, okay, this will be helpful. Swimmers, take your marks. Hup. Good. So it sometimes takes a little practice. Uh, you know, you're not going to be good at this right away. And sometimes that might ha that might happen. So the idea is that you're just working on getting better. You don't have to be great at everything right away. No one ever is. It's better to just realize that you're human. You're going to make mistakes, and you're trying to improve. Here we go again. Swimmers, take your mark. Hup. Very good. All right. So this one's going to be the same motion, but now it's doing it from their stomachs. So they're going to lay down on their stomachs, same position, arms out to the side in a T. You might find that you're faster one side than the other, and that's pretty normal. So I'm set for you to have one side that you like better than the other. Swimmers, take your marks. Hup. Very good. Here we go again. Swimmers, take your marks. that time. Okay, one last one. Just Kale, Kale missed the jump, so we'll do this one last one. Of course, there's, there's another rain cloud coming out over at us. Swimmers, take your marks. Hup. Beautiful. Very good. All right, well, that's it for today. We'll hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Let's, let's do a bike ride over to Uncle's.